I, I really just want to share my creative process uh, and talk about that. But in doing so, what I'm interested in is your relationship with your creative process and thoughts and commonalities or differences, what strikes you um, with this notion um, that of, of living in flow. So um, I'll just, I guess, give a little bit of backstory to how I started to really explore um, the notion of living in flow in the, in the creative process. Um, I have a background as an athlete, and I grew up um, in uh, the Pacific Northwest of British Columbia in the Yukon in Canada, uh, always very close to wilderness, so <laughs> right on route. Um, I, I've been blessed with with living in a in a, a place of of pretty majestic landscape, um, and I, I've spent a lot of my life exploring those places and. Um, I still um, really, my creative process really requires on a daily basis activity in nature. Um, and for me, that's become a cornerstone, not only of my flow, of my creative process, uh, my productivity in, in a more business sense, um, but just my general well-being. Um, you know, forest bathing is a, a term that's that's become popular in, in convention out of Japan. And, um, you know, I have a dog uh, because I love the companionship, but more so because it gets me out in the woods every day. Um, it, back in uh, 1998, I had a pretty classic near-death experience. Um, and it really caused, it kind of broke me open in many ways uh, my you know growing up in a you know in the western colonial world we talk we talk about this a lot now in canada particularly in british columbia um, because of the inherent indigeneity of our land um, it's a really unique place um I'm, I'm tangenting there but you know that's a significant part um uh, and I'll circle back to that with respect to the creative process, how the land and indigenous views, I think, are really aligned with this notion of flow and creativity. When, when I, after this near-death experience, I, like many folks, um, questioned everything. Um, it, it kind of broke open my rational understanding. My um, in my notes here, I, I wrote the phrase um, deconstructing executive function bias. Um, and our prefrontal cortex uh, is, um, you know, tells us where it's the boss. Um, and in our Eurocentric cultures, we, we have very hierarchical social structures and institutions that we often work within. Um, and I've, you know, had my own struggles with those and conforming to those. Um, and, and what I discovered through de deep, depth, deeply exploring the nature of that incident, what happened for me, what it inspired, um, it helped me come to understand my creative process, the role of flow in my life, and it really left me seeking constantly a sense of purpose in my work. Um, I think the perennial characteristic that I want to share is that whether I'm trying to be a creator or whether I'm just trying to reach flow state so I can get the dopamine buzz to better get through the day. I believe that that process, the creative process is a surrendering of my individual ego identity to something bigger and greater than myself. And that creativity is something that I allow in to flow through me. Um, and I think that this, I, 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 this is, a, I, I guess, a lingering question I'd like you to ponder. And I, I'm talking a little bit about my flow, my creative process, and, and I don't think that it's the same for everyone. I know that we're all very diverse and that we all have our own ways of, of accomplishing creative mindsets and states of being. 
Uh, and I'm curious what, what yours are. And when we come to the question period, um, I'd love to have a conversation about that. Uh, I'd love to hear what your creative strategies are, what rituals you use to in, create a reliable creative process. Mm -hmm. Um, what I, in the near-death experience, what I conjured is that I really needed to write. Um, I've always uh, identified as a writer. My father was a writer professionally and, and uh, creatively. Um, and I, I had this tremendous sense of urgency that I needed to write. And I, like many people, um, put my effort into a novel. Um, and I spent a bunch of time working on this manuscript um, and it took me back to South Africa where I'd worked in the mid nineties post-apartheid um, because the pr primary protagonists were hailed from Cape Town. So I wanted to go write this story from that place, uh, live as though this character was living. And in that process, I, I found this incredible understanding of how I spend a lot of my time procrastinating and how if I reached a flow state that I actually was able to write fluidly um, in a way that um, my executive functioning wasn't ruining it by overthinking it. Um, so I started to sculpt the activities of my day around optimizing that state of mind. And this is where the, the, this notion of living in flow, which I'll just say is a running experiment um, that I'm still working on, how it became a kind of a central tenet for how I structure my days. Um, what we know about flow from the science perspective is neuroscience is that we when we are in a flow state, we, it, it becomes neuro, it becomes frontal, um, or how is it described? Um, uh, it, it's hypo, um, oh, uh, I can't remember the term offhand, apologetic, um, hypofrontiality um, in that the brain is distributed, the, the neural activity is distributed across all sections of the brain and not driven by the prefrontal cortex, our rational mind, that it actually engages the full embodied consciousness um, of our neural network and heightens our sensations so that we are further optimized in our creative capacity. Um, and, and I guess, you know, I'll invite a show of hands. Who has a relationship with this notion of flow states? So I'm, yeah, okay. Um, that's wonderful. Um, I'll, I'll ask again with a show of hands before we kind of move to a conversation. Um, whose flow states have a relationship with their creative output? Okay, not everyone, but um, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that I find in my day is that I need to front load what is really important in terms of tasks and outcomes. And I'll often overwhelm myself with information at an earlier part in the day. And what becomes very crucial is that I take a, a time away from that cognitive focus. And I, I'll generally shift to exercise and generally in nature. Um, most commonly it's on my mountain bike um, and it enables me to get my dog out, um, get my anxiety in place. Um, and what I tend to find is that generally once I've reached a point of, uh, of being out of breath, and getting out of my head and actually suffering a little bit, to be honest, um, through that physiological process, that I reach that more, I guess, hypofrontiality. I get out of my head, get into my whole broader consciousness, and I allow and invite 
that flow state to sort of seep into the day. And that whatever I front loaded as my focus, what was important as a task for me to accomplish in, in my creative process, in my project management structure, that that actually just comes. Instead of actually sitting and procrastinating, I'm trying to use that time as constructively as possible for my whole, whole person well-being um, and make space for creativity to come in. And I'm just going to, I guess, tie that to some of the things I've learned through the, the privilege I've had growing up largely in Coast Salish territory. Um, and being exposed to indigenous teachings. And um, what I've come to understand is that in the, I guess, perennial characteristics of indigenous worldviews, and, and I think this goes beyond the indigenous groups in Canada. I think this is, I believe, global, um, a sort of a perennial philosophy that each of us are here in this life for a reason with specific gifts and that our creative output is an expression of those gifts. And if we can align with that sense of purpose and we can actually get over ourselves or our sort of ego needs and our identity constructs that we can make space for creativity to come through us. Um, and I found this just a, an elegant way to try and live um, as an ongoing experiment. Um, and I am constantly delighted by how it works. I guess um, I'll, I'll, I'll share one of my more recent experiments. Um, and it's a business uh, called Chinook X Technologies, and it's predominantly Indigenous owned, so over 51% Indigenous owned te technology company. And our, you know, we're, we have corporate structures um, and have the, the legal structure that fits within Canadian common law, um, but we're more interested in the hereditary Indigenous law and worldviews. And, and we, as a governance group, use this principle that we call creator's path. And we'll reflect on our actions and our decisions and ask this question, is it the creator's path? And all of us need to experience this sense of um, consensus around that to advance our business objectives. And we've done that because we've wanted to test how these traditional, traditionally inspired approaches to decision-making and consensus, the protocols around how we interact, we wanted to test them and experiment with them in the current world. And, you know, I'll often say it's actually kind of phenomenal that this company exists because of how we've approached this. And uh, I think in my bio, I, I said in a glib way that I do business as performance art and um, that, that we are approaching this company and the decisions that are made for like business decisions by asking if it's the creator's path asking if this is what wants to emerge, what wants to come into being, and are we serving this correctly, um, has aligned us and moved us in ways that we hadn't thought, ways that go beyond the prefrontal cortex and the rational realm. Um, and it's been, you know, kind of a phenomenal experiment. Um, I guess we if I want to invite further discussion, which I do, what I'm really interested in, um, and and you know we 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 have enough time, I think, for everyone else to share, uh, take a time to to you know sh share around this question, um, and and this is like what, when, where, and or how. It's a complex precursor, but. How is it that you get your best ideas? Where is it when, you know, for me, 
you know, I mentioned my bike or on my skis, uh, getting out of my head be becomes really crucial. The other time is like in the middle of the night when I'd rather be sleeping, but I wake up generally with some great lightning bolt ideas and have creative periods. And uh, I, I, I think that that's not a, I'm not alone in, in that process. Um, so if, if, you know, I, I don't feel that I need to keep talking. Um, and I'm more interested in a, in a conversation. Um, and I do see somebody posted in the chat. I'll have a quick look. Um, okay. Wow. Um, thanks for sharing, Jay. And um, is it, are you comfortable if I invite you to to maybe share a little more about that and, and maybe talk a little bit? Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. I love to talk, please. This is me. Um, <laughs> in answer, in answer to your question, um, as a slight preface, it's only been in the last three years since that NDE that I've been functional enough. Um, the the in, the the near death experience triggered a massive neurological issue, so I'm technically disabled, but I'm a little stubborn, and so since I had to release my former um, uh, private practice. Uh, my own business, I had to let that go. I just actually started a new one <laughs> in with creative, with digital art and, and that kind of thing. So because I'm bored and I need something to do. Um, but it's really been in the last three years that I've been able to like actually function enough brain wise to start going back to my former passions of drawing and photography and digital editing and things like that, that I let go of decades ago um like we're talking when I was 18 and I'm 57 so that'll tell you something and but I really find it interesting your question um 40 years ago was the last time I saw my little brother I was 17 and he was 10 and I've been looking for him since you know off and on over the, the last 40 years and by sheer luck like miracle like I wild how did that all happen and come together we actually reconnected this past April and that whole process of meeting him and reconnecting with him triggered so much of everything for me that it was because of him that I actually got everything moving and grooving and started my business and got my business license and did my website and I've got art up and I'm I'm actually doing that now. And it was that connection for me to someone who was a part of me, literally, uh, because I have no extended family for a bunch of reasons. He is my only extended family besides my children. And so for me, it was really that that kicked everything into high gear. That said, I'm still in the process of learning how to get into my flow. When I get into my flow, I lose track of time. I can be doing my thing for four, five, six hours. And my wife will come in and go, would you like to eat dinner? <laughs> what, it's dinner time? So it's it's really, all of this is very new for me. Um, and you're right. It's a heck of an adventure. I mean, just the living it day to day. I mean, there are days where, you know, I'm doing good to get up out of bed, fix myself a meal and take a shower. And other days I am so freaking productive. It's crazy. So it's, it's all an ebb and flow. Um, but yeah, getting my brother back, huge, huge step in the right direction for me. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, uh, that's a beautiful story. And um, I just want to commend you on that journey. Yeah. Well, he's a smart ass like I am. And we get to go in uh, talking about whatever. And all of a sudden, all the ideas are popping out of everywhere. You know, I'll see something in the, in the clouds. I'll see something in the trees. And I'll think of him and what he would think. And I'll bring it up. And he'd say yes. And we get bouncing the ideas. And it just sparks everything. And it's just, it's made life much more brilliant, much more colorful. So I see things even more profoundly. So, um, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, thank Thanks. you. Uh, Maria, is that how I say your name? 
correct me? Maria. 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 Yeah, thanks for sharing. You're just saying that you feel like a leaky faucet and you want to learn how to basically automate automatically turn on the flow. Yeah. Flow hacking. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's there's quite a there's quite a bit of of, of pretty cool um literature research that's happening in in that regard um i really appreciate i'm going to grab a book here uh a fellow named stephen kotler um and that's one book where he talks i'm not sure i like the the, the title so much the rise of the superman um but he runs the the flow research collective and and there's another colleague that he worked with Jamie Wheel, who runs the uh, Flow Neat jo Genome Project, and they have a great deal of information in terms of accessing flow states. Um, highly recommend. Um, you know, they the Godfather of Flow, Mahali uh, Chismic Mahali, uh, was at the University of Chicago, and essentially did a study on um, happiness. And um, flow was the result of the study that when, when he studied a number of people, um, the flow state was the ultimate human experience. So, um, Maria, how about you? Where do you get your best ideas? Um, I tend to get my best ideas either when I'm driving or when I'm sitting on my pottery wheels. So it's that doing an activity that you're just so used to doing that all of a sudden the brain just starts uh, firing. So um, I know that when I'm stuck, it's like, okay, I need to drive by myself or I need to get on my wheel and just throw uh, pieces. But it's that, um, yeah, just doing something that I don't really have to think about so I can think about other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's very much the same for me using my hands and my feet and my other parts of my body is really crucial. Anyone else feel? I think uh, Ruth, Ruth. Uh, is yeah. trying to, to say something. Yeah, um, I've been looking a lot at flow myself and Daniel Pink wrote something and he said it's about living symphonically. And, and that just spoke to me. Uh, it's just always being open to whatever may be coming to you. And you may know this. Um, uh, oh, my God, I'm awful with names. <laughs> Some of you may know this. Is in, in Canada, there's something called sap sickles. So it's when the maple trees, the sap starts running and sometimes it stops running. It starts running, but it's so cold outside that it freezes like icicles. And you, you have to catch them at exactly that moment. And it's knowing when you see beauty in action. And you go, ah, I have to capture that in some way. And for me, I took a picture and it was just the most amazing thing. You could see them sparkling and the moon was just behind what I, what I saw with the sapsicles. And I thought any other moment, it wouldn't have looked like that. And that rush, like, ah, oh, that's perfect. And now I have to write about it. So that's what I mean. It's like being open to that moment, but realizing that moment can be used for different things. And for me, that's flow. That's living symphonically. Thank you. That was elegant. I'd love to to see what you can what you write about that. Um, I, I think we're pressing time, but um, Jeannie or Bryce, anything you'd really like to share? Any thoughts? Thanks, Ruth. I'll just say when I hear living symphonically, I feel like part of being creative is when you're 
able to fire off like problem solving skills, artistic skills, the craft literally of whatever it is you're in the middle of using, you know, that was more the way it resonated with me is that idea is no part of your brain is off limits. You're truly going to combine ingredients and ways of thinking in new ways that people haven't done before. And, uh, and that everything you do is a deliberate multi-tiered sort of value. It was just, I, that was just what my brain thought. And I like that. I like yours too. But that was what made, it made me think of. Yeah, no, that's super elegant. I love how you said that. And, and so true. Yeah. Jeannie, how about you? Or correct me if I'm not doing your name correctly. Oh, can't hear you. Me? Yes, please. Oh, I have nothing of worth to share. I, um, I'm disabled too, so um, I'm looking into my own flow. Um, writing was uh, for a long time the only way I had to travel. So um, I like to get myself in gear again. And uh, I decided to use uh, my English to do it, as I'm French. <laughs> well done. Thank you. That's bold of you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. And Lala, how about you? Um, you're going to close us out, but what do you yeah. want to share about? I, I have a I have good news. We we can extend five minutes the session. <laughs> so. <laughs> We can we can have like all the uh, questions if you want, but yeah, um, I'm really impressed about your your story and and really share the same things. I think all freelancers and creatives share the same kind of uh, challenges and and needs that kind of fuel to um, <laughs> to be able to go out there and. Um, and just act towards the the dreams. I'm I am a photographer with but like an architecture background, and I've been re reinventing myself in photography. But for me, what makes me, what made me do that was, um, because I wanted to share the the people's stories, and I couldn't find this in um uh, in my profession, uh. So I am I am Brazilian and I came to London. I had to do so many things, um, and so uh, what's the name of the girl, the French girl? Um, uh, me? Yeah. Uh, let's call me Jean. That's easier. Jean. So Jean, yeah. I couldn't speak in English, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been learning as well this language, and because that's great. Uh, because it's so important for us, like in, in terms of communication. And in Brazil, nobody uh, can can speak either. So I really encourage you uh, to do the same and you're going to get there. Um, but I think like this kind of uh, events can can inspire us um, to move towards our dreams and uh, and really inspire each other. So that's why I'm here and I, I feel like every time that uh, I go somewhere like an event or um, or uh, participate in a conference that makes me really like empowered to you know okay uh, I need to do this I need to put myself on LinkedIn or like express my art in social media is is all about communicating and uh, yeah see each other as, uh, as a mirror uh, with the same challenges and like very empathetic with each other. Yeah, that's my my opinion. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Lee, for uh, sharing this with us. It's very inspiring. Mm -hmm.